For years, I used the wrong geometry workflow for CFD simulations. This is how to fix it. My name is Josef Nord and I have 16 years of experience in CFD simulations, 13 in the open source CFD tool OpenFoam. And I cannot believe that I used for years the wrong geometry workflow. In this video, I'm going to show you how I fixed it. And make sure to stay until the end because I'm going to have an Easter egg at the end of this video. Now, as you may know, OpenFoam is a free and open source CFD software, but in commercial tools, mostly as part of a workbench, you do have a tool for CAD generation where you can professionally create your geometry for your subsequent meshing and CFD simulation. Now, OpenFoam does not have this. If you take a look at tutorials, then usually what you have is a pre-prepared geometry, mostly in form of STL files, and you are asked to use this set of STL files for your tutorial. And well, that means that just like you have to bring your own booze to a barbecue, you kind of have to bring your own geometry to on an open foam simulation. And often I get this one question, how can I create the best geometry setup for the most efficient meshing stage and ultimately the best simulation setup? Well, Blender, of course. Blender is a free and open source tool to generate geometry. You can go to blender.org slash download and download the latest version of Blender for your operating system. So if we drop into Blender, then we can immediately see that we have three objects here, which we select and then delete them immediately. And we go to File, Import, and here we can import STL files. Okay, but let's stop here. So you can create your geometry in Blender, but this means that you can also import your STLs from your CAD tool of choice and use this step as an additional unifying step between geometry creation and meshing. Now we can open up the STL files and it is immediately being loaded. This is a simple STL file, as you can see, and there are a couple of things that you can do with by pressing G, you can move it, J, J, X, J, Y, J, Z, you can move the geometry in X, Y, Z direction. You can also scale it with the uh, button S. You can also scale in X, Y, Z direction, but by pressing the appropriate uh, buttons on your keyboard. A very handy tool is this uh, window on the bottoms, uh, where you can manually set the scaling factor to be exact here. So I set this value of two and now I scale it by two. Now you can, by pressing tab, change to the edit mode and here you can now micromanage the nodes of your STLs. Here you also can use G, GX, GY, GZ as you want. And also you can uh, use here the box select with B and then select and S also works in the edit mode and also G works in edit mode. Another very useful tool is pressing P on your keyboard. With that, you can separate certain faces. For example, here, these font front faces, you can change the selection mode instead of nodes. You can also select F. And also, if you go back to the node selection mode, you can select with the box, the upper, faces and then pressing P you can separate them and now we end up with three def uh, separate uh, faces uh, boundaries the inlet the outlet and the wall and this is something that you can also do your for your geometry if you have more than one inlet outlet or walls and just think about what that means. It doesn't matter whether you are using FreeCAD or Salome or a commercial tool. It doesn't matter whether you have a binary STL and ASCII STL and every tool has its uh, naming convention that all doesn't matter. By adding this one step, by importing your STLs from other tools, by implementing your geometry in Blender, you end up with one last unifying step in Blender. 
in Blender you can delete unneeded parts, you can separate the boundaries into separate surfaces and you can delete and fine tune your nodes. With this you can unify different uh, tool conventions, you can unify the tools naming conventions and in the end you unify your final set of STL files. And this is a game changer because by doing all those fine tuning steps between geometric creation and meshing, you end up with a unified solution. And then after doing a fine uh, tuning, you can separate the boundaries into a list of your typical boundaries. And then you can export those boundaries as a set of unified STL files. And if you have a certain problem setting, you always end up with the same names. Maybe you have different numbers of inlets and outlets, but then with those STL files, you can recycle your snappy hex mesh dictionary because you have this unified naming convention. And with the snappy hex mesh dictionary, a unified boundary naming convention and a unified boundary condition name convention. And uh, with wildcards in open form, it's very easy to set up those boundary conditions and you can recycle your snappy hex mesh dictionary and your boundary condition, which is a game changer because it gets rid of the chaos that you can have by using different STL frames, files from different tools. But wait, don't you already have a video on Blender export? Well, yes, if you go to my channel, to the short section, there you can find this video on how to hack Blender for open foam. But for you guys, I will summarize those steps here. Go to the installation location of Blender on your C drive or wherever you installed it. And then go into the version number here, 3.3, then scripts and add-ons and then make sure to look for this mesh STL folder. And there you open up the third file in a text editor and there in the top you just type in import OS. That's all you have to add into the, uh, into the top. And then you make sure to look for a line which says header equals header version. And then delete the header version and then paste whatever I have it on the screen here. Save this and open up a new blender. And then in your new blender, you can go to file and then to export STL. Here, make sure to check the ASCII checkbox and under batch mode, select object. Don't forget to delete the untitled.stl and then you can click export STL. And now you, what you end up with is of your final set of STL files that you exported correctly for your CFD simulations. For meshing and simulation, copy your STL files and then paste them in the folder when you want to run the meshing under constant try surface. And then you can start with the whole process of meshing and then copying the mesh to your case folder, setting up the case files, running the simulations, and then in the end also evaluating the simulations. If you like this video, then please make sure to hit the like button because with that you can make sure that the YouTube algorithm brings this video also to others so others can all learn from this. But wait, is this all I need and I can live happily ever after? Well, yes, if you use this additional step between geometric creation and meshing, this should really improve your simulation workflow and maybe even your turnaround time. If you want to know more about how to work with Blender, I did a video on it uh, four years ago. So look on my channel for this, uh, which tool to use for geometric creation for open foam and take a look at it. it uses an older version of uh, Blender version 2.79. So it's, it's, uh, ch uh, uh, things change since then. So if you are, want to uh, take a look at a more recent uh, version of Blender, I advise you to uh, look uh, on YouTube for Blender Guru. And Andrew Price has here a very good 
a short 14 minute tutorial for beginners for Blender 2.8. And this is really what you need for geometry creation for open foam. And now let's come to the Easter egg. And I'm very excited about this, guys. So here I set up in Paraview a typical open foam simulation setup. So I have a couple of uh, streamlines and I have the background and then I color the streamlines. And what I do, I go to File, Export Scene. And then when I click Export Scene, I go to the location where I want to save this and I save this scene that I set up as an X3D file. Click OK. Then I move over to Blender. And then in Blender, after deleting the three objects here, I go to File, then Import, and Import X3D. And then I open up my X3D file. And this is now going to be very, very cool. So once the scene is loaded, and you can take a look at it in Blender, but that's not the cool part, because now I go to the first object here that uh, is on my list, and then I go here to this editor, to the shader editor. I make it a bit bigger, I zoom in, and now I go to add, and there I, I look for color and then I add this color attribute node here. I place it and I connect these two dots and that's all it is. I'm just get, getting rid of the, the editor and now I select all of my objects here. So starting with the first and then until the last I press shift and then click and this selects everything. Then I go and look for the entry here called link materials. I click link materials here and now all the materials, all the objects share the share, uh, same material that we exported from X3D. And this is very, very cool. Now pressing zero on the numpad, I, we can take a look at the camera that we set up, press rendered here in Blender and now we have a very cool 3D animate, uh, 3D colored uh, um, picture of our CFD of our CFD results. We can go and change the lights here also, increase the lights that we set up in Paraview automatically, I might add. And there you can play around with the lightings. And now all you have to do is uh, get um, if you are if you're not full screen is not covering the entire surface then also make sure to track transparent and then all you have to do is press F12 and then you have your final rendered cool CFD result and of course you can save this as a PNG file wherever you want give it a name and then please click save and you have your cool image as a PNG so yes, this is why I added Blender as this additional step between geometry creation and meshing. Because it doesn't matter whether you use FreeCut or Salome or a commercial product for geometry creation. I would advise you to always use this additional step in Blender because there you can fine tune the STL nodes, you can remove certain parts of the geometry and finally you can uh, separate the inlets, the outlets, the walls and then organize them and then separately um, export them as STLs. So you have a clean uh, set of STL files for your meshing and later on for your boundaries. So make sure to uh, try this out on your own C uh, CFD simulations and I hope that you can implement it for your future CFD projects. In this video, you can check out how you can start your first CFD simulation if you don't know how to run open foam simulations.